Bayonetta 3 after release ended up being a very divisive title that even I was quite mixed on, so time to compliment Sandwich the fuck out of this. The combat is amazing, with minor points lost by something I'll talk about in a bit, but otherwise, the pulse pounding action combat combining gun fu and over the top showboating is once again top notch, with tons of weapons and attack options to choose from. And on top of all that, the summoning is no longer cutscene only. Fully controllable summons with their own attacks and special moves to obtain over your playthrough, this was a mechanic that I never knew I wanted in this franchise. And it comes packaged with another new ability for Bayonetta. The ability to transform into various kawaii monster girl forms, with again, a variety of abilities and attacks to unlock. Sure it comes at the cost of the original Wicked Weave system, but mechanically, I say it's an upgrade to the formula. I know some people don't like this new addition, but I think that is the perfect topping to Bayonetta's already amazing action combat system, and simply looking around at YouTube videos will show plenty of people far better at this game than I am, demonstrating just how many stylish combos can be made in this new system. Viola Despite being a really fun character to watch as she bumbles around the Bayonetta universe, much like a female version of another beloved character, hmm. on the gameplay side, this character is garbage. Like quit playing the game and her chapter is garbage. I did not like how she played at all, and while the patch may have made playing her a bit better, I played the character on launch and that taste does not wash out easy. Double points lost for being the only way to use a katana in this game. No! The story overall is a mild trash fire, probably due to the troublesome development the game went through. You are the prince of lies. There are plenty of fun moments, don't get me wrong, but compared to the story of Bayonetta 2, this was a big step backwards. Like, dear god, I'm not asking for handsome Jack level dialogue. Hey, how did, how did suck? But if you're going to have the villain talk to me, please give him more character than. I told you, Kakarot! There's no way you can measure up to an elite like me! You're fighting a losing battle here! You may as well just surrender this pathetic planet now and- I owe ten times three! Times one! Another disappointment, and the biggest of many, was the reduced fan service compared to the previous titles. Despite what Kamiya may have said on Twitter, this game most definitely took a bit of a beating from the general audience's bat. With the mechanic that stripped Bayonetta down to a skimpy bikini being moved to the new summoning mechanic, and the only way to actively fight in bikini mode, burlesque mode, stripper mode, whatever you want to call it, is to skillfully learn how to fight in sync with your summoned demons, a much higher bar than just do combo and see skin like in the previous games. Other things that gave me the feeling of quote unquote toning down included Many of her boss fight finishers lacking that extra over the top sexy factor that the previous titles had. It was a very different time, Mr. Kim. Taking out the old line about Bayonetta wanting to be a pole dancer from the platinum screen. I should have been a pole dancer. Just as I expected. And even toning down Rodan's command grab. Now for me personally, what was the biggest disappointment the game provided, aside from the ending, <laughs> were the grabs or lack thereof. In both Bayonetta's, QTEs were a centerpiece of the dominatrix aspect of the titular character, and it is completely missing from this third entry. In its place are quick execution events that trigger on stunned enemies, and while it is satisfying to trigger them on groups of enemies, it completely lacks the personalized absurdity of spanking an enemy stuck in a guillotine, or spit roasting them over a fire, or breaking their spines on a wooden horse. These things to me are central to the identity of Bayonetta, and without them the game just feels a bit flatter despite the grander scale of the overall title. Boss fights in this game, while being surrounded in really cool cinematic moments, just don't feel as cool as the previous game's bosses due to the lack of peppering in QTE torture style sequences in the battle. Now I'm not saying the game isn't sexy or stylish anymore, 
I mean, it's still Bayonetta. But when placed against its own predecessors, it feels like the weakest in the series, which is the opposite of what you expect from a sequel. Despite all that, the overall experience and the scenarios are still over the top and even crazier than the previous games. spider manning across a submerged city, having a Godzilla-style showdown, rail shooting against a rampaging monkey across the Great Wall of China, 10,000 foot Madama butterfly fighting a boss while taking a bubble bath in the clouds. I feel that if not for the general audiences, this scene would have included an actually naked Madama butterfly, but it's fine. The game continuously made my jaw drop in just about every stage with just the right amount of absurdity I desire from the Bayonetta franchise. This game feels like a labor of love with tons of little callbacks to the previous games, but sadly also feels like a game that was unable to fill everything the devs wanted to put into the package. The best example of that is that only one of the previous game's weapons returns for this outing, but despite that, they didn't half-ass it and allowed you to summon the boss it was made from, as well as giving the weapon a unique transformation inspired from the design. And the music. This game has some of the best tracks in the series, with the French world in its entirety providing banger after banger, and Moonlight Serenade, the game's moon song, is an excellent follow-up to Moon River. Man, to be frank, while thinking about this game, I cannot say enough about how happy I was playing through the title, regardless of my complaints. I really just wanted more from the title. And that's the best criticism you can have for a game. Does it have some problems? Yes. Are some of them deal breakers? Depending on who you talk to, most definitely. But I want to remain positive for this franchise and acknowledge that the game overall is amazing. And if they do continue the series proper, I hope that many of the features introduced in 3 are maintained going forward. A solid 8 pole dancing platinums out of 10. Okay. Let's dance, baby. 7 platinums out of 10. <laughs> Jenna. <laughs>